Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our educator webinar on biomaking. Today, we're going to be talking about algae string. My name is Anya Scholz, and I'm the program director for biology and design here at the Tech Interactive. And today, I'm going to be presenting with Caitlin Nealon, our life sciences experience developer. To go over a few of our session goals, we are going to introduce our biotinkering lab approach and pedagogy. Then we are going to demonstrate the new algae string activity and highlight some classroom insights and technical tips along the way. Uh, here is an overview of our agenda. We're going to start with the background information and, and introduction. Then we'll dive into the demo itself. Uh, along the way, we are going to make sure to highlight places for student exploration and open-ended tinkering, as well as highlighting how authentic science practices can be woven into this activity. Uh, after that, we'll highlight some content connections, as well as how to make adaptations for distance learning and finish up with a Q&A. Okay, so to provide a little bit of context, I wanted to talk about biology in the 21st century first. Um, in the last several decades, biology has changed a lot. It has advanced a lot, and it has rapidly become a powerful technology, manufacturing platform, design medium, and so much more. Um, these advances and changes in how biology can be used and applied have transformed and propelled innovation in a whole variety of spaces. Um, you can see some examples in the images on the right. The top image is a lab space at a company that calls itself the Organism Design Company. Uh, and there they engineer microbes to manufacture fragrances and flavors. Um, below that, there's an image of some stools. And these are a great example of biodesign and biomanufacturing. Um, so the legs of those stools are actually made from living mushroom mycelium that was grown into sort of board-like structure. And the surfaces of the stools are made with concrete that was actually grown using bacteria to create that sort of cemented structure. And then next to the stools, there is an image of a piece of fabric that has been dyed. And it has actually been dyed by growing living bacteria on it that produce a pigment and that pigment has dyed the fabric uh, as they live and grow. So these are some examples of the new directions that biology is going today and in the future. And these emerging industries are really interdisciplinary and looking for creative independent problem solvers to shape the unknown. Um, biology is foraying into new areas and how do we train young people to be able to successfully engage in this new landscape? At the tech, we have taken an approach uh, in a space called the Biotinkering Lab, where we are exploring new ways that we might design experiences and engage young people in uh, this idea of 21st century biology. Um, so this picture here is a picture of our Biotinkering Lab space. This is a flexible workshop space that is embedded within one of our permanent exhibitions at the institution. Um, you can see that it is mostly sort of movable tables and shelving spaces. And what we do is we design hands-on experiences that are run by staff members that we can sort of launch in this space. And then visitors who come into the tech have free access to participating in this facilitated experience. It takes about 15 to 30 minutes. And um, the goal of all of these experiences is to engage visitors in science in a new way. We want to let them experience biology as a creative and problem solving medium, sort of right as they walk in the door. Um, so I'll take a step back for a second and introduce biotinkering. Uh, so what is biotinkering? This is a term that we sort of made up. Um, so I'll explain what, how we think about it. Um, Biotinkering really is taking more classic scientific inquiry and layering on some techniques and approaches pulled from the making and tinkering movements, as well as our core expertise in design challenge learning. Um, and the idea is, is this by intersecting scientific inquiry and discovery through experimentation with some more design-based learning approaches, we can really leverage the best of all of these different approaches and create really powerful science experiences um, that are really authentic to how science is done. And so I mentioned um, 
a little bit about why we like this combination of approaches, but I'll, I wanted to highlight a few more things explicitly. So design challenge learning, making and tinkering uh, are all approaches that have been shown to effectively foster things like collaboration, ownership and agency and creative competence, um, which are all positive skills that we want to connect to science and, and young learners minds. Uh, additionally, these approaches have been shown to be effective at developing problem solving skills and promoting a positive STEM identity. Um, and importantly, there has also been evidence to show that these techniques are effective at engaging across gender, demographics, and socioeconomic status. Um, so are really valuable tools to leverage as we try to find ways to engage diverse audiences and um, really lift up new voices in the sciences. And finally, um, as, a, as a trained scientist, one of the things that really appeals to me about integrating these approaches with the more classic scientific inquiry uh, approaches is that they layer in some really powerful practices that are incredibly authentic to how science is actually done in a working laboratory. Um, and so some of those things to highlight a few are that uh, making and tinkering and design challenge learning approaches are not prescriptive usually they're open-ended and exploratory and allow for creativity and sort of personal uh, input into the process um, and this is actually what it takes to do excellent science in the real world it takes a creative mind um, it's not a predefined set of steps and so layering that idea in to science uh, during the first times that young people are exposed to it is incredibly, incredibly valuable for helping them understand what it means to do science and, and, and what good science is. So here's what biotinkering looks like at the tech in the biotinkering lab. On the left, you have some kids working with living mushroom mycelium to grow bricks. Uh, next to that, you have some children harvesting pigment that was manufactured in living bacteria to produce their own color changing paint. Uh, next to that, there is a gentleman mixing a concoction of ingredients to create a culture medium for living microbes so that they will grow a custom biomaterial of his own design. And then next to that, you have some young people working with living yeast to um, explore how CRISPR can actually change the look of those living organisms. And as I mentioned before, biotinkering is a new concept that we have been um, exploring at the tech in this experimental space. Um, so we wanted to make sure to, to try to examine what impact our experiences were having um, and what those outcomes might be. So we have been doing post-visit surveys of fourth to seventh graders that come through our different experiences. And the emerging results from those surveys are really promising. Um, so greater than 60% of respondents say that the, their experience was extremely fun and interesting and important to us. That interest is equal across genders. Additionally, uh, the respondents have reported an increased interest in science and that self-reported increase is largest for girls. And finally, when asked to associate some descriptors with their experience, the top two consistently have been creative thinking and doing real science. And so collectively, these sort of overall results are really encouraging to us as far as um, saying that we are developing experiences that engage kids successfully, um, are equal, equal interest across genders, and are starting to get young people to think about science in that sort of creative, uh, a creative mindset, with a creative mindset um, and really empower them to feel like they have some control in the experience. Um, I wanted to point out two specific examples from evaluations on um, some of our activities in the bioinks activity. Um, kids explicitly said that they liked the extraction step, not only because it was the most fun, but also because they were not told exactly what to do. They really relished the challenge of having to figure out how to arrive at the final product themselves without being given a set of steps of exactly how to do that. And then in our making with microbes activity, where visitors got to grow a bespoke biomaterial. Um, one of the things that resonated the most with kids um, that came out in their survey responses 
was that they really, really liked being able to define their own goals and so make personally motivated choices about what to create. We did not tell them what their final product needed to be. We gave them some guidance on what the options were and they got to decide based on what they cared about, what their design goals were. And so layering that, these sort of elements of personal agency and choice into a science lab um, seems to be a really powerful experience for a young person. Okay, so I've shown you what biotinkering looks like at the tech. Um, obviously, we have been closed for many months at this point, and so I've had to pivot our work, and we have been experimenting over the last six months with transitioning our in-person experiences to resources that allow people to do biotinkering at home in their own kitchen. Um, so here are just a few pictures of what that work looks like. We have made an at-home version of our Making with Microbes activity. It uses easily accessible store-bought ingredients, and you can actually grow a piece of bio biomaterial at home. Uh, and then for the BioLinks activity, that used a bacteria that is not accessible or safe for home use. Um, so we have created a version of that that uses cabbage as a starting material instead of bacteria, which makes it, again, an easily accessible ingredient and safe to do at home. And so the next venue that we wanted to explore was how can we support educators in leveraging some of these experiences in the classroom? And we actually really think that the classroom is a interesting and advantageous venue for biomaking um, in the museum setting. We're limited by the fact that people come once and stay for a short period of time, which is a little bit at odds with biology, which is a slow process and growing thing takes takes lots of time. Um, so in a classroom, you have the ability to have students who return come back for many months. And so there's some interesting opportunities for layering these sort of longer term biology experiments into that environment. Also, the, the class environment provides opportunities for collaborative explorations in a way that is harder in sort of a dynamic um, open access lab setting. And then finally, these can be the content related to, to these activities can be pretty complex. And so there are advantage, advantages to being able to layer that directly on top of ongoing classroom learnings and connecting it to other disciplines and other uh, fields as well. So today, we're going to show you a brand new biotinkering at home activity, algae string. Um, and this activity is actually mostly chemistry, but that's actually the foundation of all biology. Um, so we think, we think that's a good starting point. And also it being mostly chemistry is easier as a starting point for doing biotinkering because nothing needs to be kept alive for success with the activity. Um, and this is our very first resource for educators. So we are incredibly excited to share and uh, hope that we can get lots of great feedback from you all. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Caitlin.